Hey everyone, thanks for coming to this free training. Um, this is a training for real estate agents, brokers, and wholesalers um, looking to improve their sales skills um, and close more listing appointments or close more transactions um, every month. Um, a lot of my students start off, you know, may, maybe a house even every other month, and consistently they're getting multiple transactions a month and really increasing their revenue. So um, I'll talk a little bit about my, about my program at the end of this training, but first um, I want to give you um, uh, a free insight to what the training is like. Um, it's not a video on my face every week, but um, these are one. This is one of the main topics that we talk about, and this topic is objection handling. So an objection is just another term for is a you can view objections as someone being uncertain about your service. If they were confident in you and confident in your service, they, they wouldn't be saying no. So um, when someone says, let me think about it, or eh, I'm not sure, they're saying that they're not certain, they aren't completely confident in you, your service, or your company. Imagine three lines um, going from zero to 10 on each line. Ten be zero being not confident, 10 being let's close this deal, I'm 100% with it. All of those lines have to be tens in order for you to close the sale. So they have to be at a 10 for confidence in you, a 10 for confidence in your service, and 10 for confidence in your company. So um, there are some diagnostic criteria that we're going to do to find out where that uncertainty is coming from. Is it coming from you as a person, the service that you're providing? Um, take it, we, we are the people that I work with, work with a lot of FISBOs and expireds or wholesalers. So there's a lot of skepticism or distrust within uh, the, that population. Um, with realtors, so it's trying to overcome that, which is a whole nother lesson inside the program. But um, you want to see, and then finally, you want to see if they have confidence in your company. So um, you want to do this one thing at a time. So first, you want to see if the service makes sense. The the response to an objection might be like, "I hear what you're saying." Let me ask you a question. Does this idea make sense to you? And then gauge the response one to 10. Um, you gauge the response based off of the words they say and the tone that they say them in. 90% um, of communication is the way we say things, um, not necessarily the words we say. So you wanna definitely be looking for the, the tone. Um, and that's a big thing in sales. And that's a whole topic that I discuss or the different tones because you can make someone believe you in an instant if your tone is correct and you use tonality correctly. So, um, then you loop back into your pitch, hit them with a follow up, include new info, you know, maybe you didn't provide everything in the first pitch. Um, incorporate a little bit of their objection, but not much. Um, don't ask for the close just yet because you want to, once again, continue gauging where they are in confidence with either yourself or with your business. So uh, when you try to gauge their response on confidence to you, you can ask uh, if you knew me and how hard I work all, for all my clients' success, would you be saying no right now? Or would you be saying, let me think about it right now? And then you gauge that. And if they do, do have uncertainties about you, reintroduce yourself. Talk about a couple of the successful patterns that you have going on for you. And uh, loop that back in. To, uh, you, then you're going to raise your line from 0 to 10. And then finally talk about your company a little bit more. Ask them what they think about your company. Uh, with realtors, um, the company is less important because, um, you know, some people do have preferred brokers and businesses that they want to work with. But the realtor, 
uh, or the wholesaler or the broker is the most important part of that. So if you can sell yourself, you can sell your company. Now, this is when you ask for the close for the second time. So if they give you an objection a second time, you can't really deflect anymore. Um, you do have to handle that objection at that time or else you're going to irritate uh, the potential client and lose the sale. So you do have to go back and handle those objections. Um, and what we just talked about is a lot about logical certainty. Um, but people make decisions based off of logic and based off of emotions. And so the rest of this is um, going to be about uh, getting emotional uh, confidence. So something that we have we call the action threshold. So it goes a little like, let me ask you a question. What's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen is I don't sell your house. Or um, I take my commission. Or... The best that can happen is I still get my commission, but I raised your home value or I sold your house for more than what you wanted. So if it's not going to destroy your life, but I can change it, isn't that worth it? And kind of set them, set the stage in the future, have them thinking about the future a little bit more. Um, so just like we have an action threshold, we also have a pain threshold. What's their biggest headache? Um, this is simply asking what's going to happen if you don't resolve this issue. For expireds or FISBOs, it's, it could be them paying a mortgage on two different properties at the same time in property taxes and all that stuff. Um, if you're trying to wholesale a property, it could be the ho homeowner going into foreclosure um, if, they, if they're not able to make their payments. So that's what's gonna happen if you don't resolve this pain. And that is a lot of pain to have. And once you get that to the front of their mind, that is when you ask for a close the third time. So now you've taken care of the logical certainty and you've taken care of the emotional certainty. And um, if the person is able to be closed, you will close the sale on that third try or else um, if you don't, if they still have objections, get off the call, end the appointment, um, wait a couple days. I know that's one of the hardest things as a salesperson is to wait, but really let that, um, those emotions play through. Call them in a couple days to follow up and things will go well. So um, this is just a very brief lesson that I teach in my six week course. So. Um, I have a six-week course where I will give you a lesson each week, a topic each week, with lessons and exercises to practice. Um, now, where I differ from a lot of coaches is every week we'll have a one-on-one -on -one phone call where the first half we talk about the lesson and the second half we uh, do role plays to um, incorporate the lesson into um, your sales process um, another big thing um, I don't provide scripts um, I have worked many sales jobs in my sales pro professional career and every time I've gotten a script I've not used it and I have always been ten times more successful than the person that has been using it um, because sales is a conversation it, you can't script a conversation you can't script a dialogue and so what we do is we create a process, we create an outline, and prepare <clears throat> for certain situations um, while keeping it free-flowing. Um, so the lessons for six weeks. Um, for the next uh, uh, 10 people that sign up for the course, we have an introductory offer. Um, I mean, like I know coaches that sell this stuff for about three to five thousand um, dollars. Right now, we're under a thousand, so definitely affordable. And the great thing is, 
is that if you just close one house because of the stuff that I teach, you already got a return on your investment. Um, I have a money back guarantee. Um, no one has ever had to use it because you are going to close at least one house, if not three or four, by the time the six weeks are over. Um, because that is just how well this stuff works. Um, it's a total change of mindset about how you go through your sales process. And uh, it really uh, does wonders. So um, click the button below and apply for, uh, for a uh, phone conversation with me. We'll have a conversation, um, learn more about you. You'll learn more about the program. And we'll see if we're a good fit to work together. So it was great talking to you and hope to see you soon.